In the previous presentation, we had a look at economics-based research into the behaviour of capital markets. And it was called the efficient market hypothesis. And the feature of that research is that it looks at the entire capital market as a whole. And so it wasn't interested in what individuals did. In this presentation, we're now going to focus on individual decision making. We're going to use a form of theory called uh, behavioral research. And it comes to us from psychology, not from economics or accounting. And the particular form of behavioral research we're going to use is called the Brunswick Lens Model. So I'll bring my slides up now if I can. So we're going to use the Brunswick Lens Model to explain how individuals select and interpret accounting information for decision making. So behavioural research comes from psychology and it's grounded in behavioural decision theory. Its goal is to des describe and try and predict actual decision behave behaviour. Uh, for a specific set of stimuli or beliefs, it might be able to reasonably predict what a person will do or what behaviour that person will exhibit. And the vehicle it's going to use here is what we call a lens model. And there's different kinds of lens models and the basis of a lens model is that uh, the person sees the world and sees the need for making a decision through a number of lenses, not just one. And a lens might be, um, what education do I need? Uh, what, what's the role of income? How important do I see income? And so on. So the lens model says we choose to see a situation through a number of lenses. And so it examines the individual decision maker, the kinds of lenses that that person will use and the kinds of decisions that, will be, that this will be applied to. One word for these lenses that we use in the Brunswick lens model is cues. So cues are what inform us for making a decision. We all use different cues. And when you think of um, why you're here at university uh, studying accounting, for example, you're not here because you want to study accounting. You've got uh, a longer objective in mind. It might be that you want a job for life. It might be that you want to be wealthy. It might be uh, that you want to be able to travel the world. And when you look at these objectives, these outcomes, you've thought about how do I achieve these things? And increasingly, quality of education would have featured in there. So that would have been a cue that you use. You probably also used um, affordability as a cue. Uh, you might have used your performance at school as a cue. So that's an example. We all use these cues uh, to inform our decision. And here's a diagram. You'll find this diagram in your textbook. Uh, so it's not one that I've put together. Uh, and we have you, the decision maker, and the judgment you're going to make. On the far side, over here, we have the objective itself, the event, what it's going to take for success to achieve that. And here, it might be you want to earn lots of dollars in the future. So what, how do I make that? What decision do I make to achieve that? And to get from here to there and success, these are the cues that this person used. So quality of school, your grade point average, your GMAT, and so on. So as we just saw from that diagram, there's two sides to the lens model. On the right hand side is the decision maker who uses the cues and the, the decision being made. On the left hand side uh, is the relationship between the actual outcome that you want uh, and the associated cues that you're going to use. And like all good psychology theories, this is a statistical model. Uh, it's a positive model. So it's not um, 
it, it, sorry, it's very objective rather than subjective. It provides three levels of analysis. The first level is the input level. And this is where we consider what sources of information do we need to make the decision and what form do, should that information come in. Uh, then we look at the information processing level. What's the characteristics of that decision maker? Uh, what kind of rules does that decision maker use? And number three is the output or the decision. How effective was it? So you make the decision, eventually you test whether or not that decision was the right decision or not, whether you got the outcome that you wanted. Did the outcome align with your expectations? How effective were the cues in predicting reality? And if we go back to this, you'll see there's a solid line, an arrow, between one side and the other, and that's your feedback. So, was the event, was the successful achievement of your goal really what you expected it to be? How useful were these cues? Let's feed this back to the, to the decision maker. In turn, the decision maker feeds back the relative merits of achieving that goal. So the use of accounting information as input cues, what we've found is uh, we've, there's been a lot of research on what information was used, what information was not used, which is just as important, and how and where was it presented. And what's the, what we found is that actually investors quite highly uh, rate historical cost accounting, which is quite contrary to what other people have been telling us. So they quite like the fact that uh, historical cost is, well, it's historical and, and it's provable. You can almost see the receipt of how much uh, an asset cost. And so while investors know that uh, there's a lot of problems with it, historical cost. They also know there's a lot of problems trying to verify people's judgment about value. So they like historical cost. Um, decision makers are, tend to be graphical thinkers. So they quite like graphical presentations, even if it's in a table. Uh, they, unlike the efficient market hypothesis, at the behavioural level, we find that there's no significant difference in decision making on whether or not information is a line item or a note. And when presented with other financial information, uh, segment or industry information was more useful than past share prices. So for example, if decision makers are deciding whether or not to buy Qantas shares, um, they might take note of past performance of Qantas, but they pay more attention to what's, what are the current events in that industry. Say, for example, they might note that aviation fuel, uh, the price of aviation fuel is going up at a rapid rate, and they might make a decision that that's going to be uh, detrimental to the whole airline industry, and therefore that will influence their decision whether or not to buy Qantas shares at their current price. Uh, in uh, graphics, people have found that uh, in using students to evaluate um, or predict outcomes, uh, there have been some studies that used business students, for example, to predict whether the company featured in this set of financial reports would go on to be successful or go on to be bankrupt. And students that used a graphical item called these, these are called Chernoff faces. And it's not just a, a silly stick man drawing. Uh, Chernoff faces have all of these features, but the angle and portrayal of each feature is decided by a statistical outcome. So you could represent the findings of an income statement as a face. So for example, if the bottom line profit was high, you might see this trending towards a 
smile. If it was very bad, you might see it trending towards a, a frown or a scowl. And different data items would feature on each feature of the face. And so students using this as your basis of decision making actually perform better than the other test group, which were industry professionals uh, trying to make the same prediction. So that's a very interesting outcome. And how decisions are made. Um, interestingly, uh, the, the Brunswick Blends model has found that people are very, uh, it's very common for people to use heuristics, which are simply rules of thumb. Uh, for example, a, a, an example of a heuristic might be if in a business deal someone says take it or leave it, my rule of thumb is always to leave it. So that's a rule of thumb and we all use these. The proper word for it is a heuristic. And the Brunswick Lens Model research has found that these are quite common uh, in making financial decisions. So that's the end of my little presentation on behavioural research and Brunswick Lens Model. It's very interesting. I really do suggest you read it carefully. And in the final presentation, I'm going to take uh, a more detailed look at heuristics and what they are and how they can be used. So I'll see you there. Bye-bye.